Happy Friday. We're back with another Staff Stories. My name is Sarah. I'm the Associate Director of Young Adults Ministries here at Calvary Community Church. I'm especially excited today because I get to interview Pastor Nate Travis, who is, oversees all our children's ministries, and we're excited to have him. Nate's someone I used to work with, so I'm pumped to catch up with him and see him again. Yes, <laughs> I, I, am, I am excited. I'm excited <laughs> as well, very much so. But yeah, Vinny, before we get into it, since you're sporting a lovely Camp Boost shirt, can you talk a little bit about where you're coming from today and what that's all about? So Camp Boost is happening, uh, just started actually this week, and will continue uh, as long as families need it, but it's for our elementary kids and really to just give a boost into their lives, maybe their parents' lives, to add a little something to their schedule. Come uh, interact with some peers, have some fun, and maybe some parents just need some time to get some things done and they need a safe, secure place to drop their kids off where they know we're going to love and care for them. So hope to express the love of Jesus through just spending time with them um, and having some fun together. So it's fun. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, it was cool to pull in today and see kids on campus. Which, it's good to be around kids. Yes, yeah. it's a unique sight these days, yeah. but we're excited. But thank you, Nate, for being here mm -hmm. today. And um, yeah, we'll just jump right in. Okay. Um, so yeah, I'm curious if you could describe your time during quarantine in three words. What would they be? Three words. Um, would you accept four words, but three answers, one being a double word? You know, I'm not good at math. But okay. we'll see how this goes. <laughs> okay, all right. Uh, first one, we will go with family. Okay. Um, so, because that is who I have been with. I have been <laughs> with my wife and my three kids, and we live on top of each other already. And so now to go into this six plus months of this, it's just been more of that, but actually at a higher level of intensity. My wife read a study the other day that said parents are interrupted. Um, an average of every three minutes and 24 seconds. Like that's the longest time period somebody you go, really. Oh my gosh. And we just have this new joke <laughs> where some will be talking, having a conversation, mm -hmm. and one of the kids runs in and goes, well, there was our three minutes and 24 there seconds. It is. And so you just happen to live on top of each other, but I think it's a good thing. Okay. And so you can't help but grow those relationships mm -hmm. and have some fun. So that's the one word. Um, the second word is pressure. Uh, pressure because I think you feel it from I felt it my personality being an extrovert like can be with people yes. now I'm kind of stuck so I feel this pressure to stay in okay. um, work environment completely changed mm -hmm. the work rhythm completely is dismantled and you have yes. to restructure a new one so there's yes. work pressure there's mm -hmm. a self-imposed pressure to work well and do yes. and all the work that I did before was always public. Yes, it was all yeah. things that was pub that was you know in front of people. Yeah. Well, now everything I'm doing is behind closed doors, right. if you will, and so there's no place to get feedback. And so mm. normally, if I'm in front of kids doing a children's ministry lesson, I get immediate feedback. Oh, yeah. kids. Now there's now I'm doing it in front of a, a phone or a video camera, and we're putting it out, and there's absolutely nothing coming back. Right. So there's this pressure, um, and then there's just the work pressure because the entire work environment's different. Right. Um, and then you add in, my wife feels the same pressures because she works. And does online. The kids yeah. are feeling pressure. So there's just this pressure cooker that you're all in mm -hmm. that kind of just, you kind of feel it. And right. I think where everybody feels this stress tension, I would define it as pressure, just like kind of bearing down. So that's, that's a great word. Yeah. yeah. So that, 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 and then my last one's the double word. Okay. I'd call Maybe. it moving target. Oh, okay. Um, we'll accept be that. Because... Everything, it just does when I'm someone that's, I, I want to know what the parameters are. I want to know what yes. I'm aiming for. And then, right. you know, because we worked some time yeah. together, I am going to come up with a strategy. I'm going to come up with steps. Yes. And I am Very going to, I'm going to accomplish what's set before. Absolutely. But yeah. you watch, you know, you listen to the, the updates that come out about the pandemic. You listen to the thing. Nobody really can guess or put their hand on anything. No guidelines. So what happens is you aim at this target and all of a sudden it moves because now new information comes out or yeah. somebody you haven't seen because you don't pass them in the hallway, right. add something somewhere a week later. Yes. And well, it shifts. Mm -hmm. That like that just adds a level of, I just feel maybe the word discombobulated would be a better one I word, like but very compound, right. lots of syllables. Yeah. But I think I feel like a, a moving target is almost impossible to hit. And if it, if it ever is possible to hit. Right. And I think in this moment, I've just felt like the target keeps moving and there's right. never a way to actually hit it. It feels less linear because yeah, you have no Yeah, and, that and maybe moving this way and mm -hmm. someone comes in and says, no, the target's over here. Yes. And the That's direction you're going, you're like, no, I got to shift. And anyway, 
So there you go. Okay. Those are my three and a half words. I accept them. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. When you were talking about pressure, it kind of made me think, and this is just like a cheesy maybe euphemism, but like no pressure, no diamonds. Like through this season of like high intensity or shifting, there's always growth points, right? So with that. <laughs> and, and I think mine goes, to the, mine goes to the pessimistic side of I think about <laughs> – like uh, there, was, I remember coaching basketball. Those okay. years, you bring in yeah. a pressure defense okay. to actually break down mm. what the other team's doing. So pressure, pressure busts a pipe. It does. Like if you put too much <laughs> pressure in. So I, I get, I'll, I'll have to take that yeah, diamond yeah. one with yeah, me we'll take it and with start you. to look yeah, at things a little bit better, more the way Sarah does. <laughs> Uh, Sarah's stories are better than Saf's stories sometimes. But we'll take it. Okay. But no, it's true, and I think that is a good point because it's what you, it's how you handle the pressure, it's what you do yeah. with it, and the intention. Um, mm -hmm. So I guess with that, however you want to take that, um, what, what do you feel like has been a growth point? Like if there has been any through the season of all this change. So I got a big word, okay, and it came out of a book. Word. So it wasn't like I, I coined this in any way, but the word differentiation. Ooh, yes. and, and so I've, I've learned this a little bit on my just personal journey, really in the last year, but it's really come into play in the last six months. And the idea that I will take my, I will emotionally remove myself from whatever the facts are of the situation. Mm -hmm. So sometimes whatever is being projected or whatever is coming out of whatever situation, when I'm feeling that pressure, when those things right. are happening, I will take a step back okay. and, and, and let and not emotionally respond, react wow. more than respond. And so pull back because... In this, if other people are feeling the same pressure I am or yes. going through different stresses yeah. and things that I can't see looking through a Zoom screen, I don't know what's happening in their homes. Mm -hmm. I don't know what's going on. Right. To be able to take the step back is I have to understand they probably are leaking out some of their own emotions. Right. They might not even know what they're struggling with, just like I don't know what I'm struggling with. Right. Yeah. So just pausing. I, uh, now I would say probably yeah. my layman's terms that helps me understand is just take this pause and go, okay, before I start to feel myself emotionally come with them wow. for wherever they yeah. are, kind of take the emotions and go, no, they need to stay here, step back, and kind of remove yourself. And it's hard sometimes. It's really hard. Absolutely. I find it very difficult. I'm, yeah. a, I'm a people pleaser. Same. I want to know <laughs> that I'm in that I'm engaged yes. and I'm and I'm and I'm doing well. And so when right. someone elevates this way and says, bring in the intensity, we're going this way, I want to join in. Yeah. But there are moments that I've found what's best for my family is if I don't emotionally join in because yeah. <laughs> once the Zoom meeting closes yeah. and I walk out the door, I can't be that emotional place. Yes. And so yeah. it used to be I could had a drive home, right. you know, from work yeah. or from a we meeting a or from place. something yeah. that or a lousy golf round, you know, yeah. and I could diffuse those things. Yes. Yeah. Um, there's no drive home anymore. It's open the door. It's and 10 your steps. Right there. <laughs> and so you had to yeah. like learning to find the way to decompress wow. and remove that emotion so that you could then be the healthiest version of you. You can be yeah. in this situation. I love so. that. That's, that's something I can really take from. Cause I think that's true. Like even having like, I work right in my room next to my bed and I go downstairs and there's my roommates and it, you don't really have a lot of time to gather yourself, but I think there is that discipline of that internal state. And and I believe the question was, what am I learning? I yes. didn't say I learned. No. like as I'm in progress. Yes, which uh, I think. It, but I could sense amazing. it, like it's it's becoming the okay. That's the reality. Right. But in no way have accomplished it. You know, completely. Oh, that's if that's reassuring. Because <laughs> yeah. I'm there too. <laughs> no, thank you. So I guess kind of taking like the other side of the coin with that question, what do you feel has been maybe your biggest challenge or disappointment? Um, I'd say the biggest challenge is loneliness. Mm -hmm. um, as much as I say family, yeah. but we're an East Coast family mm -hmm. that moved out here seven and a half years ago. So there's no extended family here. Yeah. There, there aren't those. Like, we don't have our quarantine, if oh, you will. Yeah. So yeah. we stayed kind of in and early on, not not knowing everything. We've got somebody in the family with asthma, and we've got, or do we have risk factors? And then it's like, okay, yeah. maybe don't loosen up. We wanted to, we wanted to go back and see my my family, the, right. all the extended family, and yeah. we could weren't able to do that. So there was a little bit of grieving the th that trip. Um, but I, I would say in that, there just became times where you just felt like, okay, this is who I've got. Mm -hmm. And those, these are my favorite people. Right. Like those yeah. four people are my yeah. favorite. My wife's my favorite. The other three are tied for second. <laughs> um, you're in the list top 10 I love somewhere. No, no, no. But, you're down there. <laughs> um, but the, they're my favorite. Mm -hmm. And so it's great. Mm -hmm. In one way, it's great. But in other ways, it's tough because it, they're, they're the support structure that often is there now isn't. 
Right. And yeah. so, and to not be able to get in the car and drive a couple hours has been harder. Yeah. Like, and I'm eight months ago, I might not have said it because I could drive to the airport right. and fly a couple yes. hours. Yes. Well, all of a sudden it became that didn't necessarily become the right. option. So. Yeah, no, I think that's a really fair point. Our family is kind of similar where they're all in the Midwest and like haven't seen my Nana in forever. And like, <laughs> I it just say really you understand how it affects you and you'd still love the people around you. But like we're made to be so social and communal and even part of your job. Yeah, you're with people all the time. And now it's like family and it, it makes you appreciate it. But that's that's a hard process. Thank you yeah. for, for sharing that. That's very honest. And I know there are a lot of people that have shared they've been... Uh, they stayed away from the grandparents because right. of risk factors. Yeah. I mean, our, our neighbors live right around the corner from their their the grandparents, mm -hmm. and they still go and stand in the driveway <laughs> to talk with them pretty much daily. Cool. But yeah. they keep the distance because both grandma and grandpa have heavy risk factors yeah. that they're trying to honor and give space on. And so... Right. Even though you even though you can be close to someone, you can still feel the sense of loneliness. Oh, one hundred percent. And I yeah. think yeah. And I think it's just good to share like with people like you're if you're out there and you feel that way, like you're not alone. Like there is that psychological thing. Well, ironically, you are. You are but, alone. But you're not alone because of the whole, the <laughs> God is always together, with us. We're together, whatever that means. Yes, you, we are commiserating <laughs> that we are experiencing loneliness we're together. We're in a situation. And we're not making light of that in any way. <laughs> yeah. Either. So. But no, I just thank you for sharing that because loneliness, yeah. even with the people you love, is a thing. So yeah. thank you. True. Yeah. So kind of leading into the next question in all this, as you're reflecting on yourself and your family and even time with the Lord, what do you feel like something that you're learning about God in this process or you're learning from the Lord? Um, I would say the thing that pops out to me is I'm reminded of his provision. Mm -hmm. Like there's there's so much um, he constantly provides no matter what. Yes. And it it, uh, it could be from the big things um, that, that are just the the big needs in life that we have to have. Yeah. And sometimes we feel like they're not necessarily there, but God's still working right. behind the mm -hmm. scenes and there's moments where it pops up. And there's yeah. been a couple instances in you know these six months or so where that's happened. Mm -hmm. There's also the little instances where it's like, okay, in the early on stages, what are we doing about the groceries? What are we doing about totally. these things? Yeah. And figuring those things out. A funny story, it's like um, we, we were about down middle of May. We got to the middle of May or like early May and we were running down to that. I could count the toilet paper rolls. Oh, we were that. down to it. And I just what we still were like, okay, we need to go out and just go out and get toilet paper and figure it out. Sure. And yeah. I actually had an appointment in Westlake and I was driving home. It was early in the morning and I'm, I'm, I see a couple from Calvary walk, you know, literally pushing the stroller, walking across the street. And so I, I pull off because yeah. it's people like, and oh I want gosh. to talk to people, yes. you know, I'm so excited to like, talk to people. Like I know them and I pull over and it's I literally awesome. almost cut them off with my car and, and we had, we, we just had a fun conversation yeah. and when you know, he had two big things of, he was a hoarder. No, I'm just kidding. But he had know, two big dad, things so of, of Costco toilet paper and we were joking about the point. I didn't have any, but he had a whole bunch and and the next thing you know, he said, well, give me your address. And he, and he dropped a whole pack. No. So it was like something wow. funny where my wife was like, still not sure. Should we go out? And I was like, I don't know. We know we're trying to make a decision. The next thing like, you I know, you. Josh, the angel, Josh, uh, thank God, you, Josh. we thank you, Josh and Lindsay. <laughs> and they, um, and dropped the toilet paper, like in the front step. It was like, right what we needed. <laughs> and so like, the, sometimes those silly little things we take oh, for granted. Yeah. But it like was really probably what I needed more in that moment yeah. was the fellowship, 100%. just the like 30 minutes, you know, yeah. where I'm leaning out my car window and they're yeah. just spaced off to the side. That's probably was the deeper need that I totally. had. I had a yeah. lot of fun <laughs> in the conversation and it turned into a conduit. <laughs> but just those kind of reminders that, you know, God's immutable, unchanging self yeah. that even through all this, even though everything else is changing, he's not, yeah. but his provision is always there. Yeah. And even in the fact that, He's continuing to provide for things that I didn't even need, know I needed right. that That's that good. just keep that keep popping up. Yeah. And so there hasn't been this major need mm -hmm. there yeah. that's ever really arisen. And I feel like because even around the corner, God's figured out ways all in advance totally. for us yeah. to, to have those things accomplished yeah. and and keep relationships connected yeah. and all those kind of things. So yeah. that's kind of my 
the thing. Well, new mind. toilet paper is going to be something you look back one day and you're like, ah, oh, the character oh, of God. I'll, I'll always tell the story of the <laughs> magical, you know, 24 pack that showed up on the steps. We love that. Thank you, 2020, for all these wonderful yeah. examples. <laughs> yep. Future sermon illustrations. Generosity, right? Yes. There. Josh. Josh, thank you. Oh, okay. <laughs> A shining example. Oh, gosh. <laughs> okay, so from toilet paper to family. Um, Going through the, we're like very much, like you said, very in this season. There, we're not really sure when like this will end necessarily. But from what you've experienced in this unusualness, um, is there like habit or rhythm or experience you would want to take with you past like this 2020 time? Um, yeah, so I've thought about that. There were a couple of little things that kind of came up through this time period. Um, I've taken a lot of walks with my kids, Ooh, walks, like yes. early morning walks. Like I like to get up early in the morning and walk they started joining me like they just wow. they they would get frustrated if i left without Aww, them. So and so it just became time together yeah yeah and i think as i think about it yeah you're with your family you're kind of stuck in there right. but that was that always parents always say enjoy it now because it goes by so fast yeah well what happened is it just slowed down oh. it literally slowed yeah. down and so i've literally Watch them grow for six months. That's and if you think wild. about it, you watch them grow. In fact, I measured the kids the other day, and my youngest literally grew, has grown since February, and the measure board has grown two inches. And I can, and I've been able to see the changes. You know what I mean? Because yeah. you can you can see it. The you know the pajama legs are a little, a little shorter. Those kind of things. Um, but. Uh-huh. You can actually see the growth steps because we've been engaged with the schooling. Yeah. We've yeah. been engaged with the reading. You can see the milestones so they hit. Yeah. They normally hit those milestones elsewhere. Right. And then you hear about them when you have the parent-teacher yeah. conference. Yeah. Now we are actually there for those milestones. That's and so you actually really cool. see the growth. Yeah. So what I don't want to go away then is like, okay, how do I, as time starts to speed up, mm-hmm. how do I keep it moving a little bit slower? Right in our family relationships so that I can really watch the kids grow yeah. through that because nothing makes me happier mm-hmm. than for my wife and I to sit there and l- literally have these moments where they do something across the room uh, and we look at each other and like the glow coming off of both of each other like that's our kid. That's, yes. Literally just, it's it's a warming mm-hmm. thing that yeah. it's what you, it, it, it really is a fulfilling thing yeah. and you're going, okay, this is, this is our kid. Um, watch their senses of humor change. That's and like, <laughs> and we, we have laughed a lot, <laughs> yes. and I don't I don't want the laughter to end. Right. Does that yeah. mean I don't want the fun moments? Yeah. Because when they're in their twenties and thirties, I want them still wanting to come back with their mom and I and yeah. and laugh yes. and have fun. And yeah. so I think those things for me are the things that like okay, how do I not? Because life is going to start to spring back out where we're going to get totally. pulled and they're going to get older and yeah. and there's going to be natural things that pull them out of the house and and. All those things. And that, those are good things. Right. But how do we still find some ways to have those centered moments yeah. that we really um, enjoy together So and, and, and like celebrate those yeah. things and, and to keep that relationship as close as we can. Yeah. So I that's, that's that. what I want to hang on to. I love like, that. Um, You're laying those foundations and just, yeah, each season being like, okay, is it the early morning walk? Is it like the night, you know, like nighttime routine of like all being together in this specific moment or... So I think it's all of it. Yeah. Because it's no one thing. Right. Because they remember all of it. Which is... And, yeah, and uh, so we uh, normally every Sunday morning... Mm-hmm. Um, when I, I would bring one of my kids early to church right. with me when I would I set up. That. You've yeah. seen them. Yeah. They've come in and they've helped you yeah, set, up, set things. up the donuts. And, and, yeah. and so we had this little tradition where we'd, we'd stop at a donut shop, Yum Yum yeah. Donuts in Agora. Right we would mm-hmm. stop on the way and I'd get, they'd get one. And that's the only days we'd ever go. Yeah, especially. Well, now that Sunday morning became before we do church at home. A lot of times we'd walk to Yum Yum Donuts because it's not like too far. That. It's you know yeah. it's a little walk, so you burn the donut off on the way there and the way back, even better. <laughs> um, so we kept a little tradition alive, That's cool. but we changed it yeah. and we had a lot of fun in it. And I think it's one. Of, believe it or not, the reason I do it is because I remember when my dad did that with me yes. when I was mm-hmm. growing up. And I remember those moments on um, in these cold Pennsylvania mornings yeah. going and getting the hot chocolate. That's and I just best. remember that. And those were great moments for me. And I'm trying to find ways to reproduce yeah. that feeling so that they have those memories yeah. in the back. So. Wow, I love that. It'll be int- I'm sure it'll be interesting yeah. talking to your kids many years later. Maybe I'm sure it will be. They probably have a whole different <laughs> version oh of no, this story. <laughs> most definitely. Of 
like yeah. online school, but wow, that's awesome. Yeah. Nate, I, I really do learn so much from you every time we talk. Oh. I do. So thank you so much for joining me today. <laughs> yeah. No, it was, it was my pleasure. Thank you for being so kind to me. I mean, anytime. <laughs> yeah, you, you gave me easy questions. Okay, this time. When we have you back, we'll see. Yeah, thank you guys for thank tuning you. in to another week, and we'll see you next Friday.